As I leave the valley floor and begin my ascent to the Curvelesh, I decide to stop in Kutch. It's a great place to have a coffee and take in the views of the valley that I just travelled. It's also the home of Zanel Jaleka, the appointed leader of the meeting at Mesopli. Zanel Jaleka was born here in Kutch in 1805 to a family of carpenters and became a trusted soldier in a local Bay's personal army. After his Bay, the equivalent of a Lord, was murdered by the Ottomans in 1829, Jaleka sought revenge and joined forces with another rebellious fighter, Tafil Buzi. Together they launched guerrilla attacks from the mountains around here, in Lower Kervelesh and also up in the Kervelesh proper. Buzi was captured, but Joleka continued his resistance, leading the Peasants' Revolt of 1847. Just a few months after the meeting in Mesoplik, the Ottomans implemented their tax reforms here in the village of Kutch. The peasants revolted, and for six months there was battles all across this area, as far as Barat and Jirokasta. It was difficult for the Ottomans to put down this uprising, as Jaleka, who then became the leader of the peasants' revolt, quickly hid in the mountains of Kervelesh, and it was impossible for them to root him out. The fighting and warlike spirit of the Lubs in this area laid the foundations for that flag to be raised in Vlora. Joe Lecker himself was captured, but the Sultan pardoned him because of his bravery and he returned here to Kutch to live. But being the restless warrior that he was, it wasn't long before he once again picked up the gun. This time he headed to the far north of Albania with 2,000 men from Labaria to fend off an invasion of the Montenegrins. It was here that he was ambushed and died. His body was then returned to Kutch, where he was buried. In 2003, this monument was erected in his memory, and in 2012, he was posthumously awarded Albania's highest medal, the honour of the nation. He really laid the foundations for the beginning of the national awakening and Albania's independence. Now we're going to travel up into Kervelesh proper, where you'll see the terrain that he hid in when the Ottomans were trying to rout him out. We'll also have time to look at some of the beautiful surroundings and the environment. I've had my coffee, let's go. Climbing the foothills from Kutch, we reach the high, wide, and deceptively barren plateau of Kovalesh, the heart of Labaria. This part of Albania is spectacularly open and scarcely inhabited. In this ancient land, the village of Novitsa perches at the edge of a gorge, plunging hundreds of feet into the limestone plateau. Novitsa has been inhabited since antiquity and its ancestors probably stood within the ranks of Pyrrhus of Epirus and fought against the Romans in the early Republic. And if so, it would certainly explain Jaleka's fighting spirit. In the 1940s, a British archeologist, Professor Hammond, discovered an ancient wall here that goes back to 400 BC. And then a shepherd discovered a very small bronze statue of Zeus, which sadly went missing with the fall of communism. Recently, over 30 ancient coins have been found here, which just goes to show how important Novitsa was on a trading route from the inner Balkans to the coastal ports slightly to the east here, just a few kilometers away. So this place has been continually inhabited and has always been an important part of the trading route. 
It's now become a very, very popular place for tourism. There's lots of campsites here. There's um, a lot of nature to see. And there's one thing that really stands out. Let's go check it out. But as impressive as the history may be, it is the sheer beauty of the gorge that makes Novitsa so special. The Bunz River cuts deep into the limestone plateau, creating waterfalls and pristine pools. This canyon is truly the jewel of Curvelesh. Stretching for more than 40 kilometers, it is a place of breathtaking beauty and laced with walking paths for visitors. However, it is advisable to utilize the local knowledge as some paths can be difficult. The roads on Curvelesh are littered with monuments to the men who lost their lives fighting in the Second World War. And this one, between Novitsa and Proganat, is the largest and most impressive. I did a photographic project on lapidars, which is an Albanian word for monuments. I always stop when I see them. It was a brutal war in the Balkans and the Albanians in particular put up fierce resistance and suffered severely for it. The men of Curvelesh, known for their fighting spirit and the women that supported them, were so renowned that many of them were used by the Ottomans in the Janissary Corps, which is the professional high elite part of the Ottoman army. A lot of them are recruited from this area. and their sons and grandsons kept up the fight and laid buried here today. Brave men. Arriving at Proganat, the wide boughs of a plane tree in the village centre lures me in for a refreshing drink under its cover from the summer sun. First recorded by the Ottomans in 1452 and visited in 1630 by the famous traveler Evliya Chalebi, this sleepy village has often served as the municipal center for the Kervalesh. But when travelling through the Curvelesh, I have never walked down to the Peshtura waterfall. 